So as we get to understanding dreams and as we get to a place where we get to know how God communicates with humanity, one of the things that you have to capture in your mind is the issue of dreams because most of the communications that God does even in the spirit, it has to do between issues of visions and dreams that we have been explaining as we have been going throughout this um, this topic. You remember the Bible says that a carnal man cannot receive the things of the spirit because they are spiritually discerned. Discernment is needed as far as humanity is concerned for us to understand the concept of God communicating with men and understanding why we have to clarify the fact of why we should understand or we should get to be understanding dreams. So we have been going going through this topic of understanding dreams. Alright, we have been getting through this topic of understanding dreams and one thing that I have come to understand through this topic is that when God communicates to humanity or when God communicates to us, this is the very same thing that is looking at us so that we get to understand how we communicate with humanity and why does God really want to communicate with men? Because in communicating with men, I believe there are specifics and there are ways that we got to there are ways that we got to jot down that God uses to communicate uh, with us as human beings all right so we spoke of uh, three specific ways that we said God communicates to us as human beings all right we spoke of number one we spoke of visions all right number two, we spoke of dreams, all right? And number three, we spoke about the voice, all right? We spoke of visions, we spoke of dreams, and we spoke about his voice, which are the three major things that we said that God, when he communicates to us as humanity, he uses these three things to communicate to us. Now, when you go throughout your Bible, there is understanding of certain things that you get to be, you get to be understanding. Um, let us go to the book of Job, all right? Let us go to the book of Job. Let us go to the book of Job 33. Job chapter number 33. All right. We can start from verse number 15. Job 33 from verse number 15. Job 33 from verse number 15. Job 33 from verse number 15. What does the Bible say? Job 33 from verse 15. Praise God. All right. The Bible says, in a dream, all right? So, according to Job 33, verse 15, um, it is telling us about how God communicates with us as people. The Bible says, in a dream, all right? In a dream, in a dream, all right? in a dream and um, in a dream the Bible says that um, in a vision of the night so dreams are actually called visions of the night In a dream, in a vision of the night, when men are in slumbering in bed, then he opens the ears of men. All right? So what does God do? He opens the ears of men. All right? 
So while these men are sleeping in a dream and all, the Bible says God do, does what? Opens the ears of men. God opens the ears of of men. Then when he opens the ears of men, the Bible says that he sealeth and sealeth an instruction. So when he opens the ears of men, uh, why does he open? All right. He seals an instruction. All right. So when God opens the ears of men, he what? He seals an instruction he seals an instruction when he opens the ears of men his mandate is to make sure that he comes to a place where he seals an instruction he seals an instruction in what in your ears all right he seals an instruction in your ears so in the communications of god when god speaks through visions and dreams in most of the times is bringing forth instructions all right he's bringing forth instructions and in god's instructions we have to understand that when we are talking about god communicating through visions and dreams we are talking about instructions warnings directions Right, so when God is speaking to us in the dreams, He's trying to bring instructions, He's trying to bring warning. All right, warnings, and He's trying to bring um directions where God directs you in the dream. So you have to understand on that um aspect, and that is where we will see that also while this God is giving us all these instructions and uh, and warning, sometimes he wants to keep us, sometimes he wants to make sure that he preserves our lives. So you have to get it that the Bible says when men are sleeping at night, what happens is in that event that men will be sleeping at night, um, while men are sleeping at night, God comes and he seals an instruction in the ears of men. God comes and he seals an instruction in the ears of men. He will seal an instruction in your ears so that he communicates to you. And if an instruction is sealed, you have to get to that understanding that if an instruction is sealed, it means that instruction has got to be unsealed. Because anything that is sealed, there is a specific code. All right? So, there is an understanding that anything sealed has a specific code. Anything that is sealed has got a specific code in which it will need one to come to a place where they unlock it. Anything that you see that can be sealed, it will need a specific code so that it can be unlocked. So even when God communicates to humanity, whatever that you'll be communicating, there is a specific code that is there that will need you as a believer to come to a place where you unlock. So it might be a voice, it might be a prophetic voice, it might be that God is communicating you to you in some way. You will need to come to a place where you you know the cause of the spirit that is to speak in symbols as we are going to touch on a uh, few specific today few specifics today so when you wake up the initiative of dream interpretation is to get to a place where if now a message has been sealed like what the bible is 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 a uh, is communicating to us now if a message has been sealed if a message has been sealed it means that when you wake up as a believer one of your mandate is to make sure that you do what you unseal all right one of the things that you have to make sure that you look at is to unseal that which had been what sealed 
So whatever that has been sealed, you have a mandate to make sure that you, what, you unseal it. So if it was sealed, it is your responsibility to unseal it. So that is where we find the concept of what um, dream interpretation. That is where we find the concept of dream interpretation. That is how you get now to a place where you have to unseal whatever that seems to um, whatever that seems to to have been uh, sealed. You then come to a place where you unseal it through dream interpretation. You unseal that seal to get the message. And some of these messages, they are coded. We see some of these messages, they come as parables. Some of these messages, when you look at them, they come in a way where they seem to be complicated to deal with because they have um, these specific codes that are there. Now, let us get to a, 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 a dream that is in the book of Genesis chapter 15. All right, Genesis 15. Let's go to Genesis chapter number 15. Let's hear what is the Genesis chapter number 15. All right, Genesis chapter number 15. Genesis chapter number 15. I believe there the Bible has um has a clarification of a certain message that is in Genesis 15. All right. Genesis chapter number 15 from verse 1. Genesis chapter 15 from verse 1. The Bible says, after, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision, saying, all right, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. The word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision, saying, fear not, Abraham, Abraham, I am your shield, and I am thy exceeding reward. All right, I am a, uh, I am your your your, your shield and thy exceeding reward. All right, so you understand through the scripture in Genesis, Genesis chapter number fifteen from verse number one, God communicating to Abraham. The Bible says. Uh, the word came, all right, so the word came in a vision. So it was God who was communicated to Abraham, and the Bible says when God was communicating to Abraham, his word came to Abraham, it was in a vision. It was in a vision that the Lord spoke to Abraham, and it shows that when the Bible is saying that the word, all right, when the Bible is, is saying that the word, it is talking about the voice. All right, when he's saying that the word is talking about the voice, God is talking about the voice. The word of the Lord came to Abraham saying, I am the Lord and I am the exceeding reward. And the, and the Bible says, and God said to Abraham, uh, will you, uh, Abraham was asking God, so in the vision, this was in the vision, all right, in the vision, one of the things that we will have to take note is that while there was in the vision, there was a what? A conversation. While they were in that vision, there was a conversation that happened in the vision, meaning there are conversations in a vision, there are conversations that can happen. So God was speaking to Abraham and he was talking to him about um, the aspect of what he wants him to do. And Abraham was talking about the issue of why he is getting to a place where he's barren. But when you go now to Genesis, when you go to Genesis chapter number 15, all right? When you go to Genesis chapter number 15 from verse number 5, 
there is a different scenario that the Bible now communicates to us there. The Bible says, and he brought him forth and said, look towards the heaven. All right. So this was in a vision. All right. So in a vision. All right. So in a vision, while they were in that vision, Abraham was told to look towards the right. Abraham was told to look towards the heavens and tell the stars or and count the stars. So in the vision, he was told, count the stars. Count the stars. All right. In the vision, he was told to count the stars. To count the stars. So you then understand Abraham is coming from the child of uh, the, the Chaldeans. We need to note uh, the place where Abraham is coming from for us to understand why God had to bring Abraham to. To, to this place where he is being told, look unto the stars and begin to count the stars. We find it. We find it. We find it that God communicates in most ways. He communicates to us through issues that we are uh, issues or places, scenarios of things that we are used to. He communicates to us with uh, scenarios of things that we we understand. So. This vision that happened to Abraham, there was what we call, um, in this vision, there was what we call symbolic. Symbolic conversation. All right. In this vision, there was what we call symbolic conversation when he was communicating when he was communicating to 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 the heavens the heavens spoke to him in a symbolic conversation it means that there are symbols that were involved all right like the what the stars so abraham is coming from a place called number the, the number one note that we should get is that abraham is coming to a place called the air of the Chaldeans. All right. Abraham is coming from a place which is called the heir of the Chaldeans. Why is this um why is this so specific that we get to note that Abraham is coming from the place of the heir of the Chaldeans? Because the way God is communicating, God is communicating to uh, God is communicating to Abraham in a way that he can understand God the more. Because God does not want to confuse you most of the times when he brings um, when he brings communications. That is why in most times when God speaks, you will see yourself being at a place where you feel. Uh, um, there are familiar faces in the dream, familiar environments in the dream. There are familiar, even familiar conversations that come in that dream that you will be communicating um, over. You feel as if there is just something familiar about what you are seeing, something familiar about what you are hearing, something familiar about how God is communicating to you. So it's coming from the air of the Chaldeans, all right? The air of the Chaldeans, which in in modern times, the air of the Chaldeans is uh, the south east of what of Turkey. All right. In 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 these modern times, the the air of the Chaldeans is located at the southeast of um, of Turkey. These people of the air of the Chaldeans, there was something specific about them. All right. If you read now, when you even go to 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 to, to people like um, Pharaoh and so forth, you will see that the reason why there were a specific group that would be around the king called the Chaldeans was because these people had a significant gift and understanding. All right? Had a significant gift and understanding. These Chaldeans, all right, 
the Chaldeans, what you need to understand about them is that they were moon worshippers. They were moon worshippers. Chaldeans, their specific is that they were moon worshippers. All right? Chaldeans, what you need to understand about them is that they were moon worshippers. They worshipped the moon. So, when God spoke to Abraham, the moment God spoke to Abraham uh, in Genesis 15, God said to Abraham, look on the stars. All right? What did God say to Abraham? God said to Abraham, look at the stars. So, God is trying to speak in a familiar way that Abraham understands. God is communicating to Abraham in a language that he understands the more. All right? And God says, and God says to him, look at the stars. God specifically comes to Abraham and say to him, look at the what? At the stars. All right? God says to him, look at the stars. The reason God is saying to him, look at the stars, is because this is a familiar language that he understands. The what? The stars. He understands this language of the stars. He understands this language of the stars. So, it is his origin of the heir of the Chaldeans, this origin that made God to specifically say to him, look at the stars. So he has understanding because he's coming from uh, a generation where they, what, where they worship the moon. So it is easy for him to identify more with stars. So God communicates to him in a language he identifies them more. Are you seeing how dreams operate now? He, he, he speaks to him in a language that he understands the more. Look at the stars. Look at the stars. Look at the stars. So even now when you check at your personal dreams and visions, you would understand that there is that one thing that is familiar most of the times that God wouldn't want to communicate to you in languages that will confuse you. When God spoke to Abraham, he said to him specifically, Abraham, look at the stars. And while Abraham is looking at the stars, the important thing, Abraham, when he is looking at the stars, he is now beginning to see that, all right, I'm coming from the air of the Chaldeans. So, the, the, as, as they were moon worshippers, they worshipped who was what? They, they worshipped, they were moon worshippers, and there was what was called the God of the moon. All right? There was what was called what? The God of the moon. So you, you would then now begin to see that in as much as there was this God of the moon, Abraham, when he's told to say, look at the stars. So if the moon is a God, then the stars are the people. So when God begins to speak to him in that vision or that uh, vision of the night, and when God begins to speak to Abraham now to say, you are seeing these stars your children shall be as many as the stars. Now, he's looking at it, understanding from his understanding that, or oh, I'm a moon worshiper. I, uh, in our SGA of the Chaldeans, like what I explained there, we, we worship the moon. So if God says, if God communicates and says, look at the stars, so these are the people's subordinates. So if God says that as far as the stars are concerned, your children shall be as the stars. So it means God is surely calling me what? Uh, the father of many nations. Father of nations. The stars. God is communicating to him in a language that he understands. God is not speaking in a, in a Greek kind of a language. He's not speaking in a complicated kind of a language. Look at the stars. What are you seeing? What are you seeing? 
And God says, as much as you are seeing what you are seeing, that is what I'm communicating to you. That your, your, your children shall be as many as the stars. They shall stretch to be the stars. So, dreams will come through specific and uh, 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 familiar ways. God will speak to you in a way that he wants to understand. So, God wants you to understand what he says. To understand him. God wants you to come to a place that when he is communicating and speaking to you, he wants you to understand him. God does not want you to be the kind of a person where you are saying you are a child of God, but you can't hear what he says. You are a child of God, but you can't understand. Why? Because you feel as if there are too many what symbols, like what the Bible has told us uh, there um, uh, when we read in the book of Job. You feel like there are too many symbols and you can't interpret them. So Abraham here is being spoken in a familiar way. So have you ever been in a place where you are you, you are right in those dreams and you see familiar things like objects, people that are coming from the place of your origin? All right. Abraham was coming from a place which was called the heir of the Chaldeans. All right. Where they were what? Where they were moon worshippers. The heir of the Chaldeans, where they were moon worshippers. All right? So, when God is speaking, he wants you to understand. He wants you to understand. And in most of the times when he wants you to understand, the communication is straight from the aspect of what you know. All right? The communication is straight from the understanding of what you know. Am I communicating to somebody here? Are you understanding me? So you see God communicating to you in a language that you get to understand, okay, what is God saying? God is trying to communicate to me in this way. What is God trying to say? What is the message that God is trying to say? You, you dream yourself, in most cases, you are seeing yourself in your father's house. You are seeing yourself at the school that you were in. You are seeing yourself, maybe sometimes, you are seeing yourself in an environment that is most familiar to you. The reason God is communicating to you, he wants you to understand. He wants to bring out a message out of the things that you understand all right out of the things that you understand so in dreams all right so in dreams what you see is that you will come to a place where you you dream In dreams, you see yourself dreaming familiar things. While you're in dreams, you see yourself coming to a place where you dream familiar things. You see yourself coming to a place where you dream familiar things. All right? Familiar things that is to do with objects. All right? Familiar things, we are talking about people. All right, we are talking about people, we are talking about locations. All right, we are talking about people, we are talking about locations, we are talking about um, background. You see yourself dreaming while you are back in your, in your background, all right? Those are the things that dreams come with. The reason is God wants to clarify a simple message you can understand so that when you are to interpret that dream, at least there is some familiarity. 
So when God was now telling Abraham the interpretation that as you have dreamt this dream, what is going to happen is you are going to see, you are going to have uh, many children. Abraham already knows that the stars according to the God they serve, so the stars are the people, they, they called themselves stars. They called themselves stars. We we'll see it when we are to open up an aspect of the dreams of people like Pharaoh. All right. So he, he will go to bring these familiar things in your dreams so that at least you can understand. So that at least you can understand. That is why you see uh, sometimes in symbols. All right. In symbols, when it comes to when it comes to dreams, sometimes you see that um, a child. When we talk about in a dream, sometimes you see a a child. You, you see yourself dreaming about a child, and while you are dreaming about a child, it is uh, representing the what the future season it's something that you understand that all right when it comes to a child a child has to grow and when a child grows they become whatever maybe take care of you or stuff like that so some people in a dream they will dream a child not necessarily meaning that they are going to have a child but god is speaking about a season these are some symbols because God is trying to communicate to you on something at least that you understand. All right? Some people, while they are in dreams, all right, you, you, you see themselves dreaming in school uniform. You see certain people while is they are in uh while is they are in their dreams, you see them dreaming in school uniform. Alright? You see themselves dreaming in school uniform. The reason why they are dreaming in school uniform is because they've already passed the aspect of being into learnership. You have passed this aspect of school. You are no longer wearing school uniform. Alright? You are no longer wearing school uniform. And God is trying to communicate with something that is very simple. All right? That there is, you are having an attack of the spirit. All right? You are having an attack of, uh, you be having an attack of the spirit. All right. You'll be having an attack of the spirit of backwards. You're having an attack of a spirit of backwardsness. A spirit that wants you to keep on going backwards in life. A spirit that wants to keep on taking you backwards to a place that you have already passed. Are you understanding what I'm saying? To a place that you have already passed and you are seeing yourself... You are seeing yourself. Um, you are seeing yourself coming to a place where it seems like your life it's 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 you are going through these cycles that you are going. It is because God is trying to communicate to you in a language that you understand. That definitely, there is something about backwardsness that is happening in my life. How can I be dreaming while I'm in school? How can I be dreaming while I'm in school? So it is important, it is important um, to look at that. Maybe in, in, in that dream, you dream somebody who is of your relative that you understand that they were never a Christian. And God is trying to show you the type of the background that you are dealing with or the type of the spirits that you are fighting. The types of the spirits that you are fighting. God is trying continuously to open you to say, you are fighting serious spirits. You need to really open up your mind because you are battling with serious spirits or you are battling with serious demons. 
to Abraham, see the, 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 the stars. Then he sees the stars. God says, as you are seeing the stars, these shall be your children. So as you grow in understanding your dreams, you have to understand the first thing that I explained to us is that when we are talking about while is God is speaking to us in um, is speaking to us in dreams, we have to get an understanding that um, we have to get to that pure understanding that. Um, according to 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 job all right that dreams all right we have to get to understand that when god speaks to us in dreams these dreams are what are sealed this is the reason why we need interpretation when these dreams are spoken to us they are sealed into our ears meaning they are sealed into our what into our spirits so that is why we need interpretation. You wake up in the morning, it's sealed. You have to unlock it so that it can make sense, so that you can understand it. So in waking up, you already know that there is something that God has dropped in the inside of you. Every time when you wake up, there is something God has dropped in your spirit that you will have to interpret. There is something that God would have dropped in your spirit that you will have to interpret. That needs your interpretation. Am I communicating to somebody? So I want you to, to, to get to, during uh, the, the period even after this, to get to look at your dreams. I want you to look at the familiar things that always come into your dreams. Understand how God will be communicating, um, will be communicating to you through these dreams. Not saying that there is, the devil does not try to use also um, certain things that are familiar. He uses them, but we all understand when you see dreams that the familiar things are being brought, maybe somebody who you know, and the devil is trying to sow seeds of uh, confusion, division, and fights, you already know it's the devil. You already know that you're dealing with the devil. So I want you to get to a place where you get to rise up, understand that God is trying to communicate to you through dreams. God wants you to understand dreams and God wants you to understand the every message that he speaks to you. God, when he speaks, we spoke about it, that God will be speaking to you when you'll be communicating to humanity. He wants you to get information of the instruction of where you are going. He wants to bring a direction. He wants to bring a warning. This is how God has been communicating to many people even through the Bible. And while this God is speaking, there is a voice and there are actually conversations in these dreams that God can communicate to, to you in. You just have to deal with the issue of your mind, fill it with the word so that your airway or your, 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 your frequency of communication with God can be clean that you cannot be manipulated by the enemy all right so let's meet on the next lesson